As part of the family's ordeal, there was that meeting with President Trump at the White House that you mentioned. Let me ask you to talk more about that because it's a pretty extraordinary story. You discussed it the last time we spoke on pushback about a year ago, but it's very bizarre. So the family came to the White House. You were there, met with President Trump, and then he told them that Ansicoulis was actually in the next room waiting to apologize to them. All right, you know, if, if you've got a little bit of time, I just just to give the context and to remind people again, you know, we didn't go to Washington initially. We went to New York to just um, see if we could drum up some support from the American people. And as soon as we landed, we were very fortunate. The media, um, you know, started looking after us. And I think we did a press conference on the first day we were there. And it, uh, apparently the White House saw that press conference in New York and the very next day called me and asked us to go down to the White House to meet with President Trump. So, you know, we didn't set off to meet President Trump, and we were obviously thrilled that we made an impact when we arrived in New York, so much so that we got invited to the White House. And I'm told by, by various people I've met since that, you know, that doesn't happen very often. And so we clearly made a huge impact. But when we got there, I thought we were going down to talk about an amicable resolution, which is all we wanted. Um, but this was about seven weeks after Harry died, Aaron. And, uh, uh, you know, the four parents um, came, came to the meeting. But as you can imagine, they were still in a state of shock. They're not global travelers. They're certainly not used to being in um, the spotlight in loud, noisy New York. And it was very stressful. So, you know, imagine, you know, these four Britons going to the White House, and that was intimidating for me as an American. I'd been once as a child on a on one of those tours that they used to do, but I'd never been to the Oval Office to meet the President, and I was intimidated. So when we got there, you know, initially he was very charming and welcoming, but within about two or three minutes, um, he said, "Okay, let's get down to business. I've, I've got Mrs. I've got the woman, the lady, right in the next room, and she wants to meet you." And Aaron, it was one of those moments that I, you know, I, I, I was, I was sitting on one of those sofas that you see in the um, Oval Office. The parents were sitting opposite me, but there were you know, the big Secret Service people were right beside me. Um, and there were various people in the room: Stephen Mnuchin, um, Robert O'Brien, the then National Security Advisor, uh, Mick Mulvaney, the Chief of Staff, and the room was full, and it was very intimidating. And you know, in that split moment, I knew the parents weren't ready for this. They, you know, and certainly if you're going to meet the person who took your son's life, you know, you might do it um, maybe after the criminal process is complete with therapists around, certainly mediators involved to support the parties. In the Oval Office would be the last place that I would let anybody that I represent meet the person who took their life with the world's media watching. So I, somehow I summoned up the courage to say to President Trump, who was sitting about two feet away from me, I just said, no, that's not why we're here. We're not doing this today. And, uh, you know, we all know who he is. He was very, very forceful. And he, you know, three or four times he tried to persuade us to go through with this. And we just said, no. And I said, if we're going to do it, we'll do it back on UK soil after the trial. And that's when Robert O'Brien started getting very nasty with us and saying she's never going back. And it all descended into farce from there. Um, and all the time, Aaron, I'm looking at these four Britons sitting opposite me. They'd never even been to Washington, let alone the Oval Office, let alone meeting President Trump, just looking like rabbits in the headlight. They didn't know what was going on. And so I, at that point, I just shut the meeting down. I said, look, we better go.